Welcome to the Cisco Learning Network podcast. This week, we're going to be hearing from James Risler, Senior Manager of Content Development at Cisco. James recently spoke about the broad issues imposed by cyber threats that we see today during a CCNA security webinar series hosted by the Cisco Learning Network. We're going to be talking about the broad issues that we are seeing today. This is more of an introductory section. Uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and jump in. No industry is exempt from attacks. That means that everybody on this call in some form or fashion could be made a victim or be attacked or be involved in an attack. So how do you deal with that? Well, there's no easy solution. There's no one answer. There's never going to be. And just because you install a firewall in your network or a firewall at home doesn't mean that you're not going to be attacked. The attackers could be individuals. They could have a gripe against your company. They could be employees working inside the network. They could be small teams of hackers that have banded together to basically target your particular company or organization. They could be organized crime. The national governments, governments are attacking each other. I'm sure you've seen that in the news. And it could be a combination. If we remember that when the whole sit-in was going here in the United States and various you know, places like in New York City by those different groups, Anonymous started coming out and supporting that and attacking anybody that was trying to counteract those groups that were doing the sit-ins in the various cities. Then, near the end, Anonymous got annoyed with that group and started attacking them. So, you can see sometimes, you, you know, you have enemies, your enemy of your enemy is your friend, and then sometimes they're just your enemy. Attackers, by the way, are creative thinkers. Here's something I want you to keep very clear. These attackers are very well funded, most of them. They have solutions from Cisco, Juniper, HP, Huawei, Palo Alto, you name it. They have it out there, and we have to deal with that. Because they have those equipment and solutions, they're using those networks to do their attacks. They're evolving. I'll give you an example of evolving. Cisco Snort signatures are released, I think, every uh, Wednesday or Thursday, something like that. When those signatures drop that day, the next day, they see a huge shift in the Internet. So the Talos team, if you go to talosintel.com, you can read about threats that are out there. They see changes in the Internet when that happens because some signatures that used to not fire now fire, and signatures that were firing before stop firing. So they basically know that these hackers and people out there have snort signatures out there running. So this is the problem that we see today. In James's presentation, he displays a slide of different records that can be hacked, ranging from companies like eBay and Target to things like Voter Database. The link that James referenced will be available in the description of this episode. Anthem, Target, eBay, Home Depot, University of Maryland Database, Neiman Marcus, all these companies out there, some of them spend millions of dollars on security solutions, but they're still getting hacked. How do we stop it? It's probably not one easy way, because the problem is a people problem. People bring those threats into your network. People go to websites and click on them. And so you've got to be aware that you probably do have threats on the inside of your network. You just have to go find them. And we aren't really given a lot of time in the busy days of the IT professional to go around and hunt the network. But let's look at the Threatscape and how it's evolving. So here we see that back in 2000, we had worms. One of the original worms was written by a master student at the Philippine University. He wrote the I love you one. I sent it out in an email and it, millions of people clicked on it. In 2005, we got into something called spyware and root kits. What happened then was we had to come up with another solution. So that's where IPS and IDS became a network perimeter solution for us to try to trigger and fire on. These were detected inside your network. Worms, we used antivirus and host-based protection. Around 2007, something interesting happened. Conflicker came out, and Conflicker changed the game because Conflicker begot what we now know of as advanced persistent threats today. These are threats that companies use to target you. 
and target your corporation or hackers use to go after your organization. So they usually come from sites that you can sandbox, reputation-based. So now we get an advanced persistent threats around 2010, and it all started because of Conflictor. So if you read about the history of Conflictor, which is pretty interesting, and how they tried to stop it, and how it did domain name registration, and automatic creation of domain names inside the software, and how it did encryption, you'll see that we've been evolving. Also, in 2014, 15, 16, we heard something new come about, which is called IoT, the Internet of Things. That has created the increased attack surface. So as more and more things get plugged into the Internet, the attack surface, where you can attack, has increased. So remember, the attacker only needs to be right once. The defender has to be right 100% of the time. Here we have some other histories of examples of hacking. There's the I Love You, Melissa, and Anna Kornikova virus back in the late 90s and mid-90s. There, 2000, we have Nimdo, SQL Slammer, and Conflictor. Conflictor really should be around 2005, 6. And then Conflictor 2, version 2, was because the creators of Conflictor realized that they were being tracked, and they changed their software. They revved it. Basically, they added more complexity to it to keep the people following them and tracking them off kilter. So now we have things like Aurora, Shady Rat, Dooku, Shamoon 2, WannaCry, and Angler. All those are things that we're having to deal with today. By the way, if you want to read about the history of Angler, Cisco shut down Angler, which was making, I think they estimate, like $30 million a year. What do you think they're doing with that money? They're reinvesting that money into developers and software and hardware to try to continue their hacking. So the problem that we face is because they're making money from the hacks. Social security numbers, you can buy those for a dollar. You can get DDoS for $7 an hour or less. So you want to attack a company, you can go actually rent a DDoS and they will attack for a particular IP for you. You can buy spam emails, so they'll do a spam campaign for you. You can pay for malware development, and you can buy fake Facebook accounts. This is a money-making business, and that's why we face an evolving threatscape. Every time we close a door, another door opens up. So let's talk about some malware and attacker tools. There's general-purpose malware, and then there's attacker tools. General-purpose malware, they kind of release like the one that happened in England, but they released it, and it impacted the UK medical hospitals. It was really targeted toward one particular weakness in Microsoft Windows. That had been patched, by the way, but the UK medical hospitals and chain did not have that patch, and then I exploited that. So a lot of malware we see today has been fixed. It's still floating out there. By the way, conflict are still floating out there. If you plug a Windows server into the network and doesn't have certain patches, then it's very likely that conflict could attack it. So we have different types of attacker exploit, backdoors. Once they hack into your company, they, they want to install something in there so they can get back in. So they might use backdoors, gallers and droppers, root kits to give them root access to the machine. They have to pivot sideways, so they might install software that allows them to pivot. They might want to do key loggers. They might track whatever somebody types on that computer and save it so that they can maybe get passwords. Exploits, they might generate their own self-defined exploits depending upon what software that particular machine or organization is using. And then they got to deliver with the various types of payloads. So polymorphic software malware is malware that from one machine to another machine will change. Its signature or its MD5 hash or SHA-1 will change as it moves from machine to machine. Certain things will turn off and on so that if it's being tracked, you can't figure out where it's going in your company. So some Threatscape terminology that you'll hear is vulnerability. This is uh, weaknesses that compromise either the security or the functionality of of a particular solution. It could be a software bug. 
It could be a hardware bug or a combination. They buy this equipment and then they figure out where it's weak, or they look at the issues that companies report when they self-report to various sites out there that they found threats with their or holes in their software, then they just basically look for people that haven't patched it. They go write an exploit to take advantage of that vulnerability. Threats, the exploit, the way to leverage that vulnerability. Threats, the circumstances that could cause potential harm to your asset. And then the risk. All this is about risk management. How much patching, how much risk are you willing to accept in the company? And some companies actually go out and buy risk insurance to try to mitigate some of these issues. To hear more from James Risler or to view the full webinar that this segment is from, be sure to visit the Cisco Learning Network at www.ciscolearningnetwork.com. The Cisco Learning Network contains all kinds of resources to help you get started on your cybersecurity career, including additional training videos and study groups that allow you to connect with others trying to get started in their cybersecurity careers. Please subscribe to the Cisco Learning Network podcast and be sure to leave us a review on iTunes if you found this helpful. Thanks for listening.